It's the start of the week, the hockey season has begun in earnest, and that can only mean one thing. It's time for Monday Night Hockey. I'm Simon Mason, and I'll be guiding you through all the results and action from this weekend's England Hockey Premier Division games. In the Investec Women's Premier Division, we have action from Beeston against newly promoted Hampstead and Westminster, last year's league winners Holcomb at home to East Grinstead, fourth and fifth from last year with Buckingham entertaining Clifton Robinsons, and Loughborough's first match in the Premier Division against champion Surbiton. In the men's Premier Division, we've also got Beeston entertaining champions Hampstead and Westminster, Brooklyn's Manchester University at home to Wimbledon, Old Georgians play their first match in the top flight against the University of Exeter, and Reading host league winners Surbiton. Firstly to Beeston, who finished sixth last season in their first year in the top flight, against newly promoted Hampstead and Westminster. They made a number of high-profile signings over the summer break, including Grace Ballston, Lily Owsley and Joey Lee. We join up with BTV for this one, and your commentators are Steve Musson and Andy Day. Operates and it's a low one, and that's into the net. Well, the ejection wasn't so quick as the first one, but the power off the of the flick was absolutely great and perfect accuracy into the bottom corner. It's the same player again. She's gone high this time. Good save, Nikki Cochran. Another moment, another turnover. On the attack nice again and into the circle, shooting Stop opportunity that here, shot. and that's into yeah. the back of the net for two. Yeah, very rapid side Hampstead. They are pouncing on anything loose at all. Calm heads in the beast and defence, avoiding the PC. Although the Dangerous. goalkeeper's been drawn out, Nikki Cochran involved again. She's done well to block that attempt. Ball still live. Good spin turn. And she's in the way again, Cochrane and Beeston have possession of the ball. Nikki Cochrane easily the busier of the two goalkeepers. Nothing seems to stick to anyone's no, stick at the moment. This is an opportunity for a third. Good mopping up again at Beeston's defence. Once again, the ball doesn't make good. its way out of defence safely. And that's a ball towards the save post. It. And that's another intervention. If you try to release the ball at that kind of pace and there's nobody high, it's just going straight off the end. That one also oh. has been picked up. There's a player in front of the goalkeeper. It's been a place across the goal. It's another important save from Nikki Cochran. She's Good playing very well. She's uh, watching what's happening. You see, this kind of layoff is good by Beeston as well. Now, if they can get that connection. Robinson, well played. Well. Look at the player ahead. Here we go. Well, can this be the yes for Beeston? And there it there we is. Go. Beeston on the score sheet. Rosie Stevens takes the congratulations. That was all down to Sophie Robinson winning the ball in midfield and laying it on a plate for Rosie Stephen. You can see how these openings build up for Hammerstead at the moment. And you need to work just as fast backwards as you do forwards sometimes to get back into defensive shape. Beeston a bit slow at that. Lily Osley again. That's good tackle, Excellent. really good tackle. Yeah, Stop well. She uh, scored the equalising goal for University of Birmingham from a more or less similar position doing exactly this. So impressive running with the yes. ball. Here she goes again yeah. into the circle. No this one can stop her. Plays the ball. And how did that one stay out? Now that is a third for Hampstead of Westminster. This is something that wasn't apparent two or three minutes ago before the goal. Yeah. Sort of a hot and cold performance. It is. Careful. Although, look at the space that's opened up here. Could this be number four for Hampstead of Westminster? It is. It's too easy for Hampstead of Westminster. Yeah, broke very easily there. It's so here we go again. Exactly the same lineup as before. I wonder what the outcome of this one will be. Yes. It's a dynamic one, drawing out the goalkeeper. That one hits the side of the goal, if I'm not mistaken. So it'll be a beast yeah. ball. here. Nobody, everyone else is shaking their head, so I'm not sure where that was. There we go. And there it is. That's the final whistle, and that's the end of a double header here at Nottingham Hockey Centre. And it's a double disappointment for the Bees. It's Beeston 1, Hampstead and Westminster 4 for the women. That's the final score here today. Next to Holcombe Park, with last season's league winners Holcombe entertaining East Grinstead. 
Both meetings between these two ended in 2-1 wins for the home side. Let's see how this one pans out. Clifton Robinson's travelled to Buckingham with both sides looking to get their seasons off to a winning start. Last year Buckingham finished fourth just ahead of Clifton, so this one promised to be a close encounter.
Now to Loughborough students, with last season's champion Surbiton being the visitors. Loughborough won the North Conference last year and then got promoted through the playoffs, so this had the potential to be a tough start for them. In the final game of the weekend, the University of Birmingham hosted Bowden in a match between 8th and 7th from last year. Della Thomas put the home side ahead in the first half before Anya Curran equalised early in the second. Millie Gigio restored the home side's advantage, but a last minute goal from Curran again meant that the points were shared. Now to the men, then we go back to Beeston for their match against last year's champions, Hampstead and Westminster. This was shaping up to be a great encounter between two teams who would once again be looking to finish towards the top of the table. We join BTV again for the action. Certainly there's a lot of options around the edge of that circle. We're not sure at all where it's going. It's been stopped and it's not quite gone according to plan, has it? Although that said, it's still live. Hujwan blocks it and the whistle's gone. A few four around the edge of the circle. Quan Brown just a little bit further back. And that's yeah. in. That's the first goal of the season. It's Hampstead and Westminster that have taken the lead. There's plenty of Beeston players in there. We were saying earlier on the counter looked good. In fact, that's done really nicely. It's opened up here and it's been touched behind. Two options at the edge of the circle. Near or far. They've gone central. It's whipped in towards the oh. goal and it's there. Equalising goal. Adam Dixon, the captain, finds the back of the net. Beeston won. Hampstead and Westminster won. 32 minutes uh, almost completed now. I think they'll feel happy with that because they haven't had a chance to practice much with Adam on corners. This could be a second one for Beast and Chris Proctor fighting his way through the middle. There's a player over here. Can he find a shot away? He does. It pops in the air. Goalkeeper pads it out. And the outcome is, I think, a long, long corner. corner. There's really a lot of space being covered there by the players on the edge of the circle. It's in, it's been trapped, it's towards the goal, and it's through the goalkeeper. And Hampstead and Westminster have retaken the lead. 
I just highlights that little moment from Kyle, and I know he's upset about decisions, but unfortunately, that's. They have a sideline ball now just outside of the reach of the camera. Adam Dixon, England captain, plays the ball down. It's fallen nicely for Gareth Griffiths. Play continues. Can he get the ball into a dangerous area? Chris Proctor. Proctor turns on the star oh. and flashes it wide of the post. It's been a very good advert for the sport. I know uh, we get an awful lot of neutrals as well watching BTV. So hopefully you've enjoyed the game, what we've seen so far. Beeston looking to equalise, and that's a that is a super goal. goal. Fantastic equalising goal. Beeston 2, Hampstead and Westminster 2. Just what we're talking about there, Andy. Travelling with the ball, creating the space. The backswing was quicker and sharper than in his first effort. And sure enough, he's found the target. Not detracting from his game, I think he's had a super game. It's just, just those little moments that will come with experience with him. Space he is, again. is opening up here, he is again, that's a decent ball into the circle, can it fall kindly, here's a shot on goal, and it's just wide, everybody thought it was in the back of the net. As we have less than 10 minutes to play now, absorbing game here on BTV, first day of the season, the men's Premier Division. Into the circle we go, and that's a shot on goal. And oh, that wow. Third Absolute for Beeston. Wow. Look at that. Terrific stuff. Beeston take the lead for the first time in the game with 61 minutes on the watch. What about that? Well, again, you know, th we've talked about Chris Proctor for two or three seasons, and uh, just take a breath a minute here, and they can build up. Decent interception, although Palm Brown is quickly onto that loose ball. He started to creep ever further forwards, which and here's an opportunity for shots, and he needs to close that. And that's oh. turned in for an equaliser, 3-3. Three, three. I couldn't help feeling there was something like that coming, and they'll be very disappointed with that, but... Rolling again. It's played low, and that is a... What a shame, for what a Hampshire shame for Beeston. They'll be absolutely gutted by that. Good things now, because they're in a great position. Although that said, Chris Proctor playing a real good effort there. Well trapped. Holtmans. Oh, it's hit the post. He's hit the post. Goodness me. This game has had everything. F super counter-attack. And would you believe it, hitting the post. That should be it. And there we go. How disappointing, but what a game. Great game to watch. Well, that game had everything. It had goals from open play. It had goals from penalty corners. It had the England captain on target. It had a hat trick. Had a Brooklyn's Manchester University hosted Wimbledon. These teams ended level on points last season with Wimbledon finishing one place higher on goal difference. Tom Lush is your commentator for this one. An absolute picture of a day here on the opening game of the season. Wimbledon piling pressure on Brooklyn's early. Dan Vincent hasn't been able to clear. This might be a chance early on in the game for Wimbledon. Henry Weir goals and Ben Arnold finishes. The Wimbledon captain gives his side the lead after only a couple of minutes. Vincent was caught in possession, inside his own D. And then it just called for some cool, calm composure from the Wimbledon players. Ben Arnold was the quickest to react on the line. Brooklyn's building from the back. Good skills by Getty at left half. Finding Perrin, and Perrin has blasted past his man. Jackson back to Perrin, oh, and he just couldn't bring it under control. The Brooklyn striker had the goal gaping in front of him, but the pass was slightly behind him, and he couldn't quite finish. Way and Bailey saves well down to his right. Brooklyn's knocking on the door here. 
Good save by Bailey. Into the second half now. Still 1-0 to Wimbledon. The game on a knife edge. Phil Roper dispossessed in midfield and maybe a chance for the South Manchester side to break. David Flanagan, their top goal scorer last year. Tom Russell through to Jackson. One all. Andrew Jackson with the equaliser. He managed to shovel it through to Jackson inside the D. And it's a smart first touch and finish to beat the despairing dive of Bailey. One all. Wimbledon into the final quarter of the game, building from the back. Trying to pull the Brooklyn side out of position. Ian Sloan with a chance to carry, and he's still going Sloan. And he's playing an absolute beauty of a ball through to Waller, who finishes. What a finish that is by Jack Waller. A fantastic goal for Wimbledon, and they take the lead. Ian Sloan allowed to carry and get his head up. And he saw the run of Jack Waller, and it still required some finishing. And what a finish it was. He enjoyed that Waller, zinging it past Turner. Brooklyn pushing again, finding themselves behind in this game. Ray Hills just drops it back. They begin to build down the right hand side. Made by Sutcliffe Bailey. Has kicked it straight to Vincent. He played it back towards goal, and Bailey makes another smart save to his right. It's a good height for the goalie, but it needed saving to maintain his size lead. Look at Brooklyn's again. Don Bowden turning in midfield and winning inside a free hit. And now it's a chance for Wimbledon to counter. Brooklyn's have been caught with men forward. Roper dangerous in these areas into the D. And Wimbledon have a third. A yard out, the free man on the line. Slots in Wimbledon's third. And that might kill off any hope of a comeback for Brooklyn's. Only about 10 minutes to go. And Wimbledon lead 3-1. Lanigan off the top. Good save again by Bailey. This time low to his left. A few minutes to go. Brooklyn's up into the deers. Jackson again. He's taken out by Bailey. Stroke awarded by umpire Harrison. Maybe a chance for the Northerners. Jackson sent flying. David Flanagan assesses himself. And puts it wide. And George's road falls into a stunned silence. Only seconds to go. Brooklyn's again mounting another attack through Russell. And that is the final whistle. Wimbledon winners. 3-1 and an exciting opening fixture. Last year's East Conference winners Old Georgians entertained the University of Exeter in their first Premier Division match. A host of new signings will be looking to impress for the home side, whilst for the visitors they'll be keen to get off to a good start to avoid finishing the relegation playoffs as they did last year.
So Everton travelled down the M4 as they started their campaign to win back the title. They were against a Reading side who lost a number of key players in the summer. In the final match of the weekend, East Grinstead travelled to Holcombe. Last season, EG picked up wins in both matches between these two sides. Thank <laughs> you. 
That's all for tonight, though. Join us next week for another action-packed show.